In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the process of using a third-party library as a dependency and installing it into your Node.js project using npm. So here's what I want to do. I want to get the moment.js library into my project. Again, there are a couple of ways to go about it. The first way is to just get the source, copy it, save it into a JavaScript file here, and then use it acquire. That'll work, but that's not ideal. What I want to do is leverage NPM. So this is an NPM project that I created using NPM in it. And now I have a package.json, which proves that this is an NPM project. Now what I can do is I can tell NPM that I have a dependency that I want it installed in this project. And the way to do this is by using the command npm install and then the name of the dependency. You need to know the name of the dependency that you need to add, right? So in this case, I know that the name of the dependency is moment because moment.js has their libraries published in npm, their package published in npm using the name moment. If you're not sure about this, you can go to their website, which tells you what that package name is. So here I have the moment.js website momentjs.com, and then here you have a couple of options to download this library. We can download the moment.js, or you can do moment with locales.js, or you can just get one of these commands to install moment.js into your project, right? There are a bunch of different package managers here. You see there's npm, there's yarn, there's a bunch more. Uh, we are interested in npm, so I'm going to choose moment, okay? Now, this is the name npm install moment. Now, if you just do this, if you just do moment and then hit enter, what it's going to do is it is going to create this node modules folder. You see this, this folder wasn't there before. There is a folder here called node underscore modules. And if you expand this, you see there's a folder for a moment. So what it's done is it actually went ahead and got the download of the moment.js library and it's kept it over here. You see, there's an SRC folder, there is a min, which I'm guessing is the minified version of the JavaScript files. It's all here. So all you had to do was just run that command, npm install moment, and then it's there. Now here's another thing. If you look at package.json, you see it has this thing called a dependencies section, which wasn't there before. And you have this entry for moment. This is a JSON file, by the way, in case the name didn't give you the clue. So this is all in JSON. So there is this node called dependencies that's created here. And then there is one entry called moment. And then it has this version number. Uh, ignore this caret symbol for now. This is beyond the scope of this course. But basically, it has the version information over here. Just know that there is this property called moment, which has a version number specified. But for now, our sole, our main purpose is achieved. We have this JavaScript file sitting in a folder in your project, so you can use it. It's awesome. Okay, now how do I use it? The way to use it is by using the require function again, right? You know the require function lets you specify a string, which is a relative path, and it imports that particular JavaScript file, since a file is a module. We also noticed that with Node APIs, we didn't have to specify the relative path. You just had to specify the packet, like for example, the file system API. We just had to give the name and we didn't have a relative path. This is true with Node modules as well. The convention is when you do a Node module install, the name that you provide here for require is gonna be the same name as the name of your Node module. So in this case, it's gonna be moment. And this is going to give me an object, which is that library. Okay, I'm going to say let moment equals require of moment. So with this, what I've done is A, I have downloaded the JavaScript library into my project location. And B, I have used the require function to get that module, whatever that module exports, and then save it into a local variable. Now I have access to the moment library right here in my code, right? I had to run two steps to get it. First, using npm to download. Second, using require to import it into my code. So with this 
with these two steps, I basically have access to all the third-party libraries in JavaScript in the world that's published to NPM. I just need to know what the name of that library is so that I can run NPM install to get that code. And then I just use require on any file, or any JavaScript file in my project, and I have access to that library. Isn't that cool? All right. Now that I have this, I can do moment dot and then use some of the features that come with the moment library, okay? I can create a new date. Let's say I do let date equals new moment. If you aren't familiar with the moment API, don't worry about it. It's there in their website. You can look it up and understand what the library does. But uh, now I can do a console.log date dot um, well, I have to look it up now. Uh, let's do this moment dot format of DDDD should give me the current today's date. Okay, we don't need to do this. Now I'm going to use npm start, and here it tells me that. Today is a Sunday, okay? So we have successfully downloaded and installed the library. But this doesn't end there. There is another benefit to this. You notice we looked at package.json being modified. Now here's the thing. Let's say I do this. I do npm install, download a bunch of libraries, and then I've got my projects in a pretty decent shape. And now I wanna hand this over to somebody else, right? There is a friend of mine who wants to work on this project. I hand over the code to them, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna give them the node modules folder, okay? Because this can be a lot. And uh, one of the things we were talking about when we talked about the benefits of NPM is you don't wanna bundle all the libraries in your source code because that's gonna be ineffective and it's also cumbersome. So let's say I don't have the node modules folder, okay? Now I hand this over to them. They can say, well, okay, I have moment here and this is the version. So they can actually go to this dependency section one by one. If you have multiple dependencies, it's gonna show up here. There's gonna be a list of them. And they can do this one by one, or they can use a shortcut here, all right? So this is the state at which they've got it. No node modules folder. They just have your source code and package.json and package.lock.json, which I'm not gonna cover in this course. Uh, but they have package.json here. Now, instead of running npm install for each of those modules one by one, what they can do is just run npm install, and that's it. Now what this command is gonna do is it's gonna look at package.json, it's gonna identify all the dependencies that it needs to get, and it's gonna get it. Now if I were to refresh this, you notice node modules folder is created, and it has moment. I can install a bunch more. So let's say I do npm install lodash, which is another library. Now you see this, lodash is sitting over here. Now if I were to remove the node modules folder, Right, I'm giving this to somebody else. They get this and they do npm install. They get a node modules folder here with the two libraries installed, okay? And to download and uh, install the libraries is just that one command, npm install. And to use that library in your, in your code, it's basically very similar to this. You say lodash equals require of lodash basically the library that you're using here. And this you can call it anything you want. It's just a variable name which you're capturing what the library is exporting, okay? So this is how you download and install third-party libraries and how you can import it into your code and actually use it in your code. So you're gonna put all this knowledge together into building this command line utility which takes in a time zone when you run it you pass an argument, which is the time zone, and it's gonna tell you the current time in the time zone. So we'll do that in the next tutorial where I walk you through step-by-step step how to build that utility. So I'll see you there.